Okay, we're going to look at circular motion at an angle. We've looked at horizontal circular motion, and so just to refresh your memory, remember that uh, in horizontal circular motion, velocity is 2 pi r, the, circum the perimeter of the circle, 2 pi r on t, where t is the period, and t and the frequency have an inverse relationship. And velocity is always at a tangent to the path, the circular path. Acceleration in a horizontal circle is v squared on r, and that's always to the center of the circle. And force by Newton's second law, f equals ma, is just m times v squared on r. And it's also towards the center. So when we have circular motion at an angle, the thing you need to remember is that you add the component forces together to get the net force acting towards the center of the motion. Here is a game of total tennis. I'm sure you've all played total tennis. So you have a ball moving in a circular path, but the tension force is at an angle. So we need to identify the net force, remembering that in circular motion, the net force is always horizontally towards the center. So we're going to add these tension and weight forces together in a vector sum. You can see they're not in a vector sum here. They're not added head to tail. It's important they're added head to tail. So I'm going to add the weight force down there. And I'm going to make a nice, neat right angle triangle there. So we have some angle to the vertical theta there. And so our net force, our centripetal force, net force, the sum of the forces is this dotted line along here. And that's the bit that we equal to mv squared on r. And that's the typical pattern that will follow. You add together your two component forces to find the centripetal force towards the center. And it'll work out to be a nice right angle triangle. We can use Pythagoras or trigonometry on that. So you can make two triangles with these sorts of questions. You can make length triangles with height radius and length, the, the ball down here, and some angle at the top there, and you can make force triangles with the weight force acting down, the tension force acting up here, the object down in the string here, and the centripetal force acting towards the center, the centripetal force being the net force in this case, acting towards the center, the sum of those two forces. The only thing that these two triangles have in common is theta. You need to be very careful that if you have a triangle made of forces, you're not putting length quantities in and vice versa. The only thing you can move between these two triangles is the angle. So here's an example question. Here is a theme park ride where you have circular motion at an angle the angle is 57 degrees to the vertical here and by using similar triangles we can see that that angle in there will also be 57 degrees so I'll draw my triangle a bit bigger over here so we have 57 degrees up here we're going to have the object down here we're going to have some tension force here Writing the triangle this side of the triangle will be the weight force that we would normally draw there, but we can sum those vectors, we can move that arrow over to this side of the triangle here. And so now we're asked, what is the size of the net force acting on Sandow on the middle of the rotation? So what is the net force, what is this side of the triangle here? This is going to be the net force, the centripetal force down here. So looking at our triangle, we see we have the opposite and the adjacent side that is the one that we know about. So using our knowledge of trigonometry, we can say that tan of 57 equals the opposite, the net force, over the adjacent, the weight force, mg. So rearranging that, we see that net force equals mg tan 57m, in this case being 60, so it's 600 tan 57. Which looks out to be 924 newtons, written to three significant figures. 924.
display a knowledge of trigonometry. The next question we're asked the size of the tension force supporting the ride. Uh, so again we'll draw the right angle triangle. Where we have the tension force on the hypotenuse. We have the centripetal force, which we just worked out in the previous question, 924 across here. And this was the weight force here, the 600. So we could work out this out with Pythagoras. We know two sides, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, or we can use trigonometry. So we know this is 57 degrees. So we can say that the sine of 57 degrees equals the opposite of the adjacent, so the opposite of the hypotenuse is 924 over t. So t will be equal to 924 over the sine of 57. And so the tension force is 1102 newtons. That's the tension along here in the ride.